Good morning, little Timmy. How has your day been? Good? You've got a lot done? You're feeling chipper? Well, it's time to put that to the side and get back to Hoi 4. Because just like me, you are also trapped here forever. And winchforth, we are heading into the world of Hearts of Iron 4 to check out more focuses that nobody does because there are much better ones to do. And today, it is time for Grey Skies, Depression, and Onions. It's the USSR. Now, when it comes to the USSR, there's actually quite a few focuses in here that people don't do. So some of the basic ones, of course, we have Historical, which is Stalin, then we have Trotsky, which I'm sure a lot of people do as well, but we do have Bukharin over here, which uh, I guess not a lot of people do do. <laughs> Dude, do <laughs> but the path I want to do today is all the way here in Bizarro Land. Now, of course, if you're gonna go ahead and overthrow the USSR, usually you do it for a bit of LARP and bring back Mr. Tsar Nicholas himself, at least his relatives, because Tsar Nicholas unfortunately didn't make it out the basement. So instead, today we won't be doing any of that nonsense with the Romanovs. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and dismantle the Zemsky Sabur. But that's going to be a little while away. First off, we've got, we've got to actually, uh, you know, win this whole civil war thing. So, since we benefit from the knowledge of knowing what's coming, we're going to go ahead and build the railway all the way to the, to the west, um, so we get a much better experience fighting through Siberia. Uh, I say much better, but it's really not going to be that much better. It'll still be absolutely terrible, but that's the fun of Siberia, children! <laughs> yeah, pay a visit when you can! As soon as we move down our folk tree enough, we can now start infiltrating provinces and spreading our revolution for the revolution. Uh, we've had enough of the old revolution. We're going for a new one, which was a revolution after revolution after revolution, really, if you think about it. And uh, we mostly want to just concentrate on uh, actually taking taking over the railway. Uh, that is going to be our most important supply route into Moscow, which we need to take uh, very quickly, really. I have an option to kill uh, Zukov right now, and because I'm not 100% sure if he'll be on my side or not, because there, there is chances that they do flip. I don't know if it's for every general, but uh, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Okay, there you go. We finally got ahead and got ourselves the Civil War. Uh, I took a bit longer than usual just because it was going so well. And look at all that land we now have. Uh, the Civil War isn't too complicated. You get a whole bunch of partisans rise up and you just want to kind of snake for the big cities because you will get events where you'll capture their supply or they'll flip to you, which is uh, pretty important. Because... Um, you don't exactly have the best <laughs> situation in what you're in right now. You need to win as quick as you can. But there you go. We are now situated for the Mad Dash in Kiev, which um, went a, a bit better than it did recently, I imagine. Also, I can't remember if I even mentioned it, but an easy thing you can do to kind of make this way easier for you in any Civil War in a Hoi 4 game. Uh, I don't usually like to do it, but in the Civil War with Russia, you kind of need to because you want to get it done quickly. Is before you actually set it off, Go ahead and switch all of their templates to a cavalry one, or just a really weak one, and then delete all of their other templates. It'll make things way easier, as that's all they'll be able to recruit. Well, uh, other than their starting NKVD division, you can't change that, uh, or the garrison, so make sure you set it to their garrison too, and it will just make your life a lot easier, as like, I am just only fighting cavalry now. Go, that wasn't too difficult at all, I didn't even have to push far into them, I got about here, uh, Ukraine and Crimea and Kyrgyzstan and, uh, Armenia have also blown out of them, so I'll have to eat those guys back up as well. The most important choice of the entire game here, do we keep our capital in Chita, which is all the way over here, which is probably the worst thing you can do, considering all your supply comes from your damn capital, <laughs> or should we just move it to Moscow, which is the sensible thing to do? Of course, we're not really going to lean into that whole monarchist thing today. It didn't go well the first time, it's definitely not going to go well the second time, so we're going to go with... Volgograd. Strong name. Right, there you go. We have secured our new state. And securing is definitely what we need to do now because it's 1939 and we are incredibly weak to what you would be normally as you just played the Soviet Union. Because right now the Germans wanted to roll over us, they most certainly could roll over us. Uh, we need to beef ourselves up. So we still get Molotov, uh, which is okay, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> we, we still hold all this land. It's going to be a bit annoying now because we're going to have to hold 
hold it, and the Polish resistance is not too fond of that. Oh, it's 1940, and the Germans are already coming for us. This can only go well. The Tsar is finally back, although much of the power, as we have already discussed, won't be really lying with him today, as we are dismantling the Zemsky Sabur. Right, there you go, we have dismantled the... I've said it so many times already. We have dismantled the Zemsky Sabur, and we are now... Uh, you've got a little bit of a different thing going on. <laughs> now, the Germans do already have their war goal on me, but whether or not they will declare on me, I'm not too sure. I'll try and get more non-aggression packs and, you know, tell them that I'm cool, bro. I'm just like you, without the mustache. Instead, I have this beard. Uh, to hopefully give us a bit more time to build up, because uh, we definitely need a lot more time to build up. We are very behind. Right, so I have rushed down here to the third row for something, uh, something interesting. For a nation of patriarch... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say they may be the third row, but on the map, it says that I am the third row. Why did we have to be this color, too? <laughs> Alright, so we've had a bit of a change of leadership here, and now we have the trait Defiler of the Sun God. <laughs> Supreme representative of God on Earth. You know what? <laughs> sure. Alright, now this does mean that I am no longer fascist, so that is no problem for me, because... They were called Third Rome. Uh, so I imagine the Germans will be coming in. Yeah, they just cancelled their non-aggression pact. And uh, yeah, I'm not too worried now. i got a little bit of extra time to build up. Here they come. And I guess, yeah, we could join the Allies, but no thank you. Right, so the German war machine has ran into the, um, the Russian wall. Uh, yeah, okay, just moving up to where they are now. They've taken 2.1 million casualties. <laughs> now that we have started the Germans in their tracks. We're simply waiting until our own war economy really kicks into gear and we can do a pushback. Uh, these units are only really made for holding, so it'd be pretty catastrophic to attempt to push them all the way back to Berlin right now. So all I'm saying is don't get too comfy there, Germany, because you'll be going home soon. And our planes are just completely outtrading the Germans too by a long shot, which is fantastic. We need to blow up their air force if we ever want to push them out here. Now we've gone long enough that we can finally get about fixing our infantry and our army, which is very important. Uh, otherwise, we'll be going in with quite a few debuffs. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just realized how bad my air force is right now, too. <laughs> uh, but you have a lot to do as the Russians. Uh, the army's already got a little bit better, but this should pretty much short it out. And the air force is still going to have to work on a bit. But even so, we are still just absolutely decimating the Germans in the air. But, uh, yeah, we've done 5 million casualties on them. Uh, just under a million ourselves, but when haven't the Russians taken massive losses? <laughs> I was going to hire an admiral for our uh, navy, but I guess uh, <laughs> Stalin got them all, so... <laughs> <laughs> Emil Gergen, <laughs> you're in charge. So we're in a position now where I think we could probably easily roll over the Germans, which makes things too easy. So instead, I'm going to war with Estonia. <laughs> mother always said, do not play with your food, but Mother also never had to rebuild Third Rome, so go to hell. Speaking of Third Rome, uh, there goes First Rome. Now, you can't have Third Rome without Finland. That would be like having a sandwich without bread. It looks like the Germans ain't looking too fresh. I think it might be time for us to make our move. Uh, Casualty-wise, they have taken 7.5 million from me. <laughs> yeah, uh, but first off, uh, Third Rome could... Rec uh, well, I guess I don't get Lithuania in my Third Rome unless... <laughs> ba -da -da -da. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Break the AI! But yes, uh, Lithuania, very important to the uh, Third Rome grind. It, it's time. <laughs> Roll over Germany. Oh, oh yeah, that um, that collapsed almost instantaneously. Really, I think I just completely disintegrated the entire Eastern Army there. What are the casualties at now? That it's still yeah, it's seven million. So I guess there wasn't really any manpower even left in what was defending over here. But it's not over quite yet though. There is still more to do for us to rebuild our third Roman Empire. Being in the Allies is a little bit annoying though because Poland now exists. Uh, if they weren't and I rolled over them, I think I could have taken the Polish lands, which is yeah, not great, not great, but also 
the yeah, Poland's you you aren't invo invited to the third Rome anyway. Uh, I think this might be a little bit wrapped up now for the whole axis. Uh, <laughs> not really anything left. There she blows, and I I guess that is all the Germans had left in their equipment stockpile. Not a lot. Thankfully, I have playlet conferences on, so this could be way more bearable to get through. Okay, annoyingly though, because I'm in the Allies, I can't. Puppet, oh, anyone, that, that, okay. Oh, we're going in for some drastic measures. I, uh, I just immediately got kicked from the, uh, the Allies too. Probably because what I just did at the Peace Conference. Hey boys, we've got a new opportunity out east. First things first, time for a bit of revenge on the Mongolians for something or other. Not sure what. I also called in Tanatuba to help them. <laughs> Don't think that's gonna go very well. Go! Now I've got my great puppets of Mongolia and Tanatuva, which is now Tanu... That. The big thing about doing Third Rome is obviously getting war goals on Turkey, Italy, and for some reason the UK too, which, uh, yeah, we don't really want to do that because they're all in the Allies, and I don't really feel like invading America right now. But another part of coming over here on the focus tree is that we get to get revenge for that whole Russo-Japanese war business. Uh, also, it's kind of weird, you get this thing called intervention in the Americas where you just uh, boost fascism in a whole bunch of people, and get rid of their stability for 730 days. We're gonna do this too just to see what happens, but uh, we also create the North Pacific Treaty Organization. <laughs> Oh, uh, and uh, yeah, I've also got to the point where I have nuclear bombs now, so I'm sure they'll come in handy for a little thing we got planned. That's the absolute worst about Russia right now, and I wish they would change. You can't actually release any nations from you unless you do the autonomous Soviet republics, which of course you can't do. Um, I please change this for the love of God. Interestingly enough, it doesn't look like the Allies combined so far have put much of a dent in Japan. They got a couple islands, but they've also lost a bit of the front line over here, probably because Japan's actually done reorganized government of China, so they're probably a lot more powerful than usual. Uh, it's going to be a shame that I'm going to tear that whole thing down as well. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and give them a bit of a head start. You know, get a bit more time to get ready for me. I'll do the um. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nupto. <laughs> We've done it. We have formed the North Pacific Treaty Organization. Uh, fellow members, uh, Mongolia and Tanatuva <laughs> so far. <laughs> but we'll grow it larger to get around this allied horde. Oh, look, we got the Dominican Republic. Nice. Big, big moves. I guess we could invade America from here if we feel like it. Oh, Venezuela too. Okay, we're growing larger. Look at that. The Roman purple covering the, the Caribbean now. Yeah, okay, so the problem with this, all right, is that they all will just leave me. Um, simply for the fact that I'm not even fascist anymore. I'm just not aligned. So I don't think they really want to be my friend. Hey, okay, regardless of that American affair, we are now going to take what we will call sweet, sweet revenge. Russo-Japanese war round two. They literally have nothing on my borderloo. So I did the uh the Axis navies and uh, as you can see they are doing the work unlike in the first first Russo Japanese war the navy didn't really do the work. Also, I see you there, uh, Venezuela. You're in the wrong. <laughs> you're, as, you're on my side. Oh, we're, we're dragging them in. <laughs> what happens to those units? They just disappear, or they fight? I think they just disappeared. A little delayed. Uh, Russian meddling in the Americas. Yeah, we are indeed meddling in the Americas, but uh, we, we were doing that a little while ago. I see how it is. You can. You know what? <laughs> you know what? If I can't take Japan, you're not gonna have it either. Yeah. I hope. I hope you love it over there. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I did check. I don't think any of the South American countries actually got that modifier that boosts fascism in them or the uh, the stability modifier. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe because we're not fascist too. Uh, but yeah, or it could just be broken, you know? I mean, with Hoi 4, it's probably just broken. You know? Oh, there goes the Japanese. Do I actually have to capitulate the Chinese? I do actually have to capitulate the Chinese to get this over with. And, uh, oops. Forgot about that front. Don't even care. To make this a little bit easy on us, although... 
given historical precedent, that is probably not very sensitive. All right, there we go. Now time to make the third Rome even further. There we are. Truly, we have very much defiled the sun god. Uh, in fact, we've pretty much dropped the sun on them at a couple different points there. So I would say uh, third Rome is probably the best uh, path you can go as the Soviets. I think just staying as the Soviets is probably the best path because you just get you're so slow having to do the civil war and then also being guaranteed to be declared war on by the Germans isn't really too fun. I guess if you did uh, a historical it'd probably be a little bit better because then you have the chance that the Germans won't just come in and absolutely decimate you. And uh, of course they didn't decimate me but also holding as the Soviets it's incredibly easy if before the uh, new entrenchment bonuses and defensive buffs that you get. So yeah we, we did absolutely destroy them, 7 million of them, to put it lightly. Uh, but still, you don't really get much chance to be aggressive as Third Rome, or do a lot. Uh, I had to do my wars with the Baltics and uh, the Finland while at war with the Axis, which again, I might not have even gotten one of them because <laughs> the UK guaranteed Lithuania. Uh, but either way, I hope you enjoyed this look at Third Rome, and if you want to give me another path to have a look at in our terrible focuses, nobody does for very good reasons, then feel free to let me know down below. Uh, uh, I'd love to do some more, and I think we'll probably revisit uh, old Russia another time, because I do want to do some achievement hunting again. But uh, until next time, my gravy timmies. Wake up.